good morning to all of you it's audible yes sir so it's audible yes sir it's audible yeah yes sir it's uh, good morning to all of you uh, good morning to dr janet ma'am and uh, i am very much uh, delighted to take an opportunity to introduce the today chief guest dr b janet she graduated bsc physics with a distinction from holy cross college tirchi affiliated to the bharathidasan university tirchirappalli and obtained a master of computer application from bishop heber college with a third rank from bharathidasan university tirchirappalli she cleared the national eligibility test for lectureship by ugc in 2001 She started her research in information retrieval with a first class in MPhil in computer science from Malappuram University, Karaykudi, and PhD degree received from National Institute of Technology, Tiruchirappalli. She has published more than 50 research papers in international journals and conferences of repute in the field. of information processing and security she has been a professional facilitator of students her teaching experience includes experiments on activity based learning learner centered teaching and flipped classrooms she visited malaysia to present one of her research papers in a conference she is also a, re a reviewer for international conferences and journals She is presently the life member of Computer Society of India, International Association of Engineers (ISTE, ISC), and International Association of Computer Science and Information Technology. She is also an active ACM member and a senior member of IEEE. She got awards like Young Faculty Research Fellowship, third rank in MCA. and national eligibility test for lectureship national scholarship scheme and merit certificate she applied patents for a multi directional display device to enable active user screen time and method thereof she is actively involved various consultancy projects in bhcl idrbt on mobile security Sida Trivandrum on emergence response support system for women safety she is actively in various responsibility academic and administrative within the institute and applied various r&d projects and developed curriculum she developed laboratory attended workshops and symposium and conferences and the seminar organized and delivered various invited talks she is having the various membership of land societies her academic foreign visit to malaysia for paper presentation for conference and she published many books and chapters she has journal publication 26 and international conference proceedings 36 now i invite dr b janat man to share her expertise on edge security ma'am please thank you ma'am thank you very much sir for your introduction thank you ma'am thank you thank you Uh, can you see my screen yes ma'am yes ma'am yes thank you um good morning everyone i'm uh, thankful to the organizers for giving a beautiful introduction and reading uh, all that was there on my resume thank you very much i uh, deem it a pleasure to just talk with you because uh, online mode would make it more interactive rather than sharing a video with you 
so i was wondering how to make the video and uh, it took me a lot of time in order to do it of course i had a 20 minute video recorded but uh, uh, i was not satisfied with the way in which it worked because i wanted it to be interactive so today we are going to look at a, a technology that uh, people have been working with without knowing that they are working with it okay and something that is very important that you will have to understand when you are working with this technology take an example of uh, the uh, platform that we are all connected in we are connected through this google meet platform and this meet platform is actually something that is using this edge technology in it and it is trying to make the best use of resources in order to make the connections possible how many of you have been connected with the mobile phone can you give me an s in the chat box and if you are connected with a laptop can you just type lap i want all the participants to do it if you are connected with a mobile say mob or yes if you are connected with a laptop say lap i see there's an equal share of uh, laptop and the uh, mobiles here okay your mobile your laptop is a device that we are using in order to connect to this uh, whole platform and i am here sitting with a laptop before me and i am just talking with you okay and what happens is that it is an interconnection of all these devices together pulled and pushed by various network connectivities some of it being wireless some of it being wired and some of it being um, you know through bluetooth or other network technologies so when you look at it security becomes a very big part in it what is security security is trying to uh, provide you with your own privacy with the protection for the data or the content that you have okay so edge is a technology that we are all working with if you look at it your laptop or your mobile can be an edge device okay and this device has some memory associated with it and this memory is doing some processing before transmitting the information over the internet i am talking here it is being recorded somewhere else and all of you are listening to it okay so this is a connected network a connected of things a connection of things that we call as the internet of things and in this internet of things there is a lot of uh, new facilities that are being added and edge uh, technology is one such that is being added to it so i would like to start with the uh, what is an edge i would like to start with the definition of what an edge is when you look at the edge we are connected through the cyber space and we call it microsoft edge of course i wanted you to give some examples of what is edge security so that i'll be able to start my lecture accordingly so if you look at mathematics we call the edge to be the corner of a face or a, a plane or connection of uh, two vertices together we call the uh, technology as cutting edge technology which uh, sharply changes or it, it totally transforms what we are normally working with when you define an edge it is something that will open the gates into something new or it will be the end of something and the beginning of something and what we normally look at in edge technology is that it is distributed computing wherein there is intelligence in the edge devices or the edge nodes you take your mobile for instance or your laptop for instance there is a part of uh, the laptop doing some processing before it is sending the information outside say i can uh, make some uh, few changes here of course in this online platform that we are connected to now everything is based on the google cloud so it goes to the google cloud and the data is being analyzed processed stored everything happens there but what if this data is being processed and analyzed on my laptop itself then that we call it as edge computing instead of being cloud computing okay so our data is not uploaded directly to the cloud or to a centralized data processing system but some processing happens inside the system i have taken a few pictures from the internet for my presentation these were all googled in from the internet sources of course i have not given the source underneath 
it is an example of edge computing a picture of it which normally people talk about in internet of things or what we now uh, define as internet of everything okay i gave you a, a explanation of it earlier now when i talk about what is this distributed computing distributed computing is having your computing on various things it is not in one place okay say in a car if your car is uh, an edge device then your car will have a set of sensors in it your mobile phones will have a set of sensors in it can you give me an example of a sensor can you please uh, type an example of any one sensor that your mobile phone has ir sensor ir sensor yes thank you proximity sensor thank you kartika yes any other sensors that you find on your mobile phone touch sensor good yes on the screen you have the touch sensor fingerprint sensor you have the cameras okay so camera is also something that can capture some information inside now all these are said to be distributed okay and these sensors will keep collecting information your location sensor collects the gps location of your uh, uh, mobile phone so all this is what we already know in uh, your computing and in the domain of the internet of things now how does this become distributed now what happens to all the information that is present say in your um, uh, robotic arm on your uh, um, industrial setup you have various sensors here on the um windmill you have various sensors on the um solar panel you have a various sensors in them on your power grid systems you have various sensors on the ocean you have various sensors for seismic wave uh, analysis on the cars you have sensors on your dashboard you have sensors on various machineries or various uh, logistic equipments you have a lot of sensors attached walk into a store you have a lot of uh, um, you know connected uh, sensors in them in order to help them make their own inventory possible now all these devices when some sensor is attached to it it becomes a, a bit more interactive it because it, it is able to take a lot more data and it is able to give you some information from it now instead of just having all these nodes separately different different nodes in their own positions why not combine them together and take their data together this was what we did in cloud computing where we took all the data it was a lot of data even though it was just a, a integer or a floating point or a number this data was taken collected in real time and the whole data was processed in order to give to the cloud so when the cloud processes the data the cloud takes some information from it and that information is fed back to the car saying this route is clear you can go through this route this is the normal working of a given iot device what we had already used in the uh, cloud as a service being provided to it data is being processed on the cloud and the uh, centralized data processing system gives back some information we had analytics in it we had optimization of this data machine to machine transactions so all these were terminologies that uh, uh, bloomed out of the basic structure of the internet of things now where does edge come into picture when the internet of things had to communicate with the edge if you look at the next picture you would get an idea about it there are edge devices we call this as edge okay where all the devices were in near the users that were collecting this data and this data had to be sent to the cloud it was too much you know taking a lot of time there were efforts and uh, another problem was the basic problem of security yes, where it is confidentiality can you mute yourself yes it's confidentiality availability and integrity of uh, data okay so what happens in this case is that when uh, the data from the edge device has to be sent to the cloud it takes a lot of time in order to do it and uh, there is a lot of compromise in the security also 
and these cloud data centers were in different places all over the world and you do not know where this data lake or data farm or data center is being located and so people thought that maybe we can have some fog nodes in between say if it is the nit trichy campus in nit trichy we have a server room and that server room would be our fog node that will connect with the data center elsewhere the data farm is very big which can store a lot of information which only the multinational companies uh, have uh, established so far government of india had established data centers in delhi bombay and in a few places and they are trying to work with them but still it is a big challenge in order to maintain and uh, work out a data center so what people thought was we'd have a fog or in between which will uh, do some processing here and archive the data inside the cloud but the problem may basic problem in this case was about the confidentiality availability and the integrity of data and you know when you look at the number of edge devices that are being connected here there are millions of edge devices connected just think about it your cell phone having four or five sensors in them all these five sensors can get data from it and imagine how many cell phones you have in your house now you know every say you are four per people house even your children have either a cell phone or a laptop now for their online classes so minimum you have four devices in a house four into four that would be 16 inside a house with four people in there okay and you multiply that with the total number of population of course we can assume that 50% of the world's population does not have any connected device with them still it will run into billions and these edge edge uh, sensors or devices or nodes that we call them these form the basis of what is going to be the next generation computing because uh, there are problems with cloud data centers we will discuss about it a little later some examples of uh, what we are using already okay we have fall deduction systems for the elderly say if the person is upright then it sends a, uh, it does not send any message but the person is uh, lying flat then immediately it will be able to send a message to the keeper saying that uh, the person has fallen down it's a simple uh, sensor that is attached to the body intelligent clothes for safety applications then you have smart access systems that can open doors that will use biometric or facial recognition systems of course uh, reliance was talking about uh, one reliance engineer was talking about how they had developed a edge device that can directly without any access to the internet they will be able to identify the person who is standing before it and they will be able to open the door based on it okay so it is localized there were uh, you know security increases manifold when edge intelligent devices uh, are being used you have the pet monitoring system that will uh, uh, be a collar which we had been using for a very long time here it is a um, smart fitness equipment as you are doing your exercise your blood pressure your uh, uh, sugar and other levels are being monitored heart rate they are being monitored and your doctor also is keep, kept informed about how much exercise you take or your fitness trainer also keeps track of that okay intelligent steering wheels that can provide with various uh, options for you in order to drive them self predictive electric drives name it you have a device available okay your uh, fridge has become smart your uh, uh, oven toaster griller had become smart a long a time ago and what is the smartness that we talk about you keep a potato inside and the potato comes out baked with the right settings in it and the settings is already pre programmed simple okay so these are some of the examples that we already know which we have been using and now it has expanded on to a lot of industrial areas if you look at the applications in transportation it is going to trans transform uh, people are working on electric cars and electric cars as you know have less mechanical parts in them so on the uh, uh, contrary you will have a, a high end uh, embedded chip inside it so autonomous automotive uh, vehicles in logistic sector where you have a fixed road through which it has to travel in uh, factory 
we have already uh, implemented this driverless vehicles and it will be a matter of another 10 to 20 years wherein we will be able to sit inside the ola without a driver and start driving on our roads okay of course it has to happen in america first and then it has to come to india because uh, uh, for our indian roads it has to be really really intelligent in order to drive a car okay healthcare systems where you have remote patient monitoring wearables knowingly or unknowingly during the pandemic we had been forced into it okay and uh, we have these uh, wrist watches that can monitor our uh, heartbeat those are simple uh, devices that can monitor the heartbeat but if this can communicate with my doctor and over a period of time tell that i had a fluctuation like this at this period of time then what will the doctor be able to tell me like immediately i'll be able to predict what will happen next time there is a meeting schedule my stress level would increase and uh, my dosage of medicine would come immediately for that day saying that i have to take more amount of medicine on that day because my blood pressure is prone to rise this we call it as predictive monitoring you know uh, trying to predict what is going to happen in the future even in manufacturing sectors people are using this agricultural stock sectors to uh, monitor the stock of uh, livestock smart farms are being uh, are using this remote monitoring of sites like uh, underground uh, mining caves wherein people will not be able to enter we have surveillance systems video conferencing you know every um, school college or uh, uh, institution has a surveillance system associated with it okay then you have this energy and grid control which uh, has a lot of uh, utility services essential utilities across like power oil gas electricity so you have various types of utilities that are being provided for the users and for them we are trying to use a lot of um, edge devices that can do some sensing from the uh, external environment and transfer the information further okay now what happens when this ha this uh, what is the kind of way in which this connectivity happens okay the device is connect by using either a wired or a wireless communication technology and then the devices can upload the data to the server it is being processed to make it meaningful information and sent back to the device if you look at the device i have already told you there are billions of devices these devices are connected through a gateway through a network server on to an application now what happens in the application is that the application gives me what is the current uh, uh, in, uh, the in, uh, what is the current status or it tells me some intelligent information based on some analysis that happened or based on some uh, uh, correlation of data that has been transferred from the device okay now where exactly is security a problem here can you say where exactly will your you have a security problem in this kind of a communication device you have the device taking in the data there is a gateway there is a network and an application can you tell me where exactly in this whole process there can be a security breach or a problem with security um, is it on the gateway okay gateway yes gateway is one of the problems okay you have it on the device you have it on the gateway you have it on the network server you have it on the application name it anything that is online can be vulnerable very easily okay unless it has the proper security measures inside them on the device if you have not given your password properly on the gateway if the gateway uh, protocols are not properly defined on the network server if the security in the network server is not properly uh, put in place on the application if your application has web application vulnerabilities yes as uh, rashmi patil said it is everywhere okay uh, when you look at it your uh, problem is across everywhere of your network 
right? And uh, it can happen in any place. So what is the basic idea behind this edge environment? Because you will always have to go through the gateway, the network server, and the application. Now, what people thought in this edge device is that if you can keep it close to the server, and if the time taken in order to communicate to the cloud reduces, then we would be able to do something properly. Take an example of this. You have your uh, jewels, you know, your uh, gold uh, um, necklace or uh, gold chains or gold earrings. What do we do with them? We just keep them inside a house, inside a beautiful drawer. We lock it and we double lock it if we have more uh, jewels in our house. And then we uh, don't open the room for all the servants or all the people who come inside. Okay, this is what we normally do as a protocol when we have something which is really, really important. Now, if you look at the data that we have, our data is very, very important. And we cannot just take the data and then just throw it out on the road. Okay, what happens if you are just opening your data and giving it outside? It is like taking your jewels that you have and leaving it out on the veranda. Will we do it? No. Why? Because it is important, someone can easily take it. What happens to the data that we have? See, we as Indians are not very worried about the data that we have. So what we normally do is, someone asks us for our OTP, we immediately give them. Someone asks us, what is your name? You should first stop and think and ask, why are you asking for the name? See, on our mobile phones, we download an app, then it will ask for permissions. You know, your uh, um, uh, scanner app should ask only permission for your uh, camera, okay? There is no need for the scanner app to ask for your location or for your uh, other uh, sensors that are available on your uh, mobile phone. But we as the end user do not worry about our information that it is like taking your jewels leaving it out on the road, saying that it is safe out on the road, assuming that it is safe out on the road. But no, it is not. That was one reason why this edge devices and the edge security came into picture. What people thought was, instead of keeping your information outside on the road, you can keep it inside, very close to yourself, where you can uh, assume that there is security or you have control over the security that is available inside nitt network i'm happy okay if i connect my laptop outside nitt network to any port then i have to be very careful about what information goes out because i know nitt ip network has a firewall has uh, inbuilt security mechanisms in them okay so if my server is very close to my device I will be able to ensure security in them. This was what um, brought about this uh, edge security. Okay, So people thought that why not make the edge smarter instead of going for a cloud or for a fog, why not make the edge itself smarter and only communicate with the cloud in order to archive the data when it is not very pertinent. Of course, when you connect a set of devices together, you have to be connected in them. But it's really important to know the time also, you know, the time it takes in order to send the information to the cloud, get back the information and keep processing. If it is close to my device, I will be able to do it real time. So this edge computing helped me in order to create a real time processing. So I have an inference edge server. And I have an event backbone. This is uh, about uh, collecting, cleansing, organizing, analyzing, training, and storing of information. This we will study about it in detail in edge computing. But we are not about we are not worried about edge computing now. What we are worried about now is about the security of the solutions that we follow. So what we normally do, some of the challenges to set up communication between the device and the cloud. You know, one reason we are all worried about these online classes is what will happen to my network connectivity? Will my network connectivity work? Because I connect and suddenly I lose the connectivity, I will not be able to organize the workshop. But thank God we have these wired systems which we connect and it provides with very little disruption unless there is some hardware problem behind it. 
another challenge is the cost of these wireless solutions that we have and uh, the access to the computing power with guaranteed performance when needed you know the time when you start immediately the power goes off and you don't have an ups you have a problem so for uh, this setup to work properly we need to have some guaranteed performance right and it should be slow interrupted or non working wireless connections you have a lot of problems now with online classes going on we have these problems for a long time many people connect together or you have a common wifi network and all the people in the family connect then the speed goes down okay real time operations you just wait for some answer to come in and then you do some processing then there is a very big challenge if you look at it for online class okay i miss a part of the class i don't worry about it but if that happens in an emergency room in a hospital then every second matters okay you should be able to get immediate response from the other end if you have an operation going on and someone from somewhere is remotely uh, taking up the operation okay then you have to manage the data that will be generated by these iot devices they called it big data but it has become bigger than the big data now because you have data that is being generated every second and this data cannot be thrown out because it's important now people know that all data is very very important okay and uh, they are trying to gather all this data trying to find out some patterns in them in order to identify how exactly the human being thinks okay so the stores of data that uh, have to be uh, connected and collected they are being stored in servers in order to be processed and manipulated okay and the last but biggest challenge about this internet of things is the personal data integrity and privacy it provides with integrity and privacy for the devices that are connected uh, over a secure network but for personal data integrity and privacy it provides with a lot of challenges in that okay we are uh, uh, into a lot of controversies lately about data integrity and privacy of individuals being uh, exploited and uh, you know all these companies give us a i agree statement at the end many of us don't read it but it's very important that we know what we are trying to give out as our own personal information okay and uh, some of the uh, kind of comparison between this cloud and this edge computing because many of us are familiar with the cloud computing i thought that we would uh, compare both of them together okay in cloud computing you have a centralized location wherein you store your data whereas in edge computing it is collected and processed locally very close to the data collection center either on the servers sensor or very close to the sensor okay so here there is less load on the network and the servers and we are able to process the data in real time and will with faster response time and the most important advantage over edge computing is the security of it because your data doesn't go to a third party server or to a different place your data is with you and you are able to process your data and send out only information that is pertinent to outside okay so this is the biggest advantage of edge computing so what are these edge computing devices you can call them to be local data centers or micro data centers or any small device with compute power near the end user or the end uh, sensor that you have okay so these can be edge computing devices that will compute data um that will try to uh, remove those data which are not needed and send only that which is needed outside okay so if you look at the iot solutions architecture this is the general flow we called it the things we called it the devices now we call them the edge devices okay the, what what is the difference between your thing and your edge device your thing will just take the data and send it it will not do anything with the data in it whereas your edge device will take the data do some processing in it and send only the processed information or the secure or whatever is needed only that will be sent inside okay and uh, then you have the sensors or actuators that can be wired or wireless if it is wired you have its own problems if it is wireless it has its own problems in there 
Then there are internet gateways, data acquisition systems that can be used in between for analytics. Then you have edge IT. This edge IT is being integrated with your sensors and actuators in your edge computing. Okay, and uh, the data center or the cloud can either be on a cloud or on a floor fog or very near to the edge device itself. That can uh, advise, transform, integrate, operate, and manage the services for the user. This will give a feedback to the um, sensor in order to make the sensor work. Okay, so the, an example, a simple example of it is. Like every morning, you will get a message from your doctor saying that this is the amount of BP med tablet that you will have to eat. Okay, this is the exact amount of it. So how will he be able to do it? He would have your uh, uh, BP data of uh, maybe five years or ten years of uh, the time where in you had been uh, checking into him. Every day your BP data is logged in, and this data is being sent to the doctor. The doctor evaluates this data and says your BP is like this on these days, so you will automatically be given this much amount of medicine to it. Okay, this is what we call as intelligence. Now, what happens if you add a machine learning algorithm into it? Your doctor can be replaced with a machine learning algorithm. What the machine learning algorithm will do? It will coordinate with your uh, calendar, which is also available on your mobile phone. It will coordinate with your uh, um, uh, other events that you have planned in the notes that you are taking, and it will check to see for a particular event what what was the uh, amount of. Uh, is there a problem? No. Well, for a particular event, what was the uh, problem? Practically, the uh, event is being linked with the uh, amount of uh, variations that you had in your personal uh, um, blood pressure. And the doctor will be able to immediately say that next time you have this meeting scheduled, you immediately take a higher dose of your medicine. So the doctor is being replaced with a machine a learning algorithm. That algorithm will be able to do this analytics for you, uh, manage your data, and send in the information. This is what we call as intelligence. And when an edge device is given this intelligence, we call it we call it edge intelligence. Okay, edge device that can compute is edge computing. Edge device that can take some data that is already there, do analysis. Predict, uh, make predictions on that and give some intelligent information to the user, which normally only people were able to do it. We call it as edge intelligence in them. Okay, so uh, say you are having a fault detection system. So uh, the uh, system, uh, the um, uh, whatever data had been collected, you try to analyze your GPS data with the fault systems, and you know that if the old person goes near this place, he normally falls down. So next time he goes in that direction, before he goes there, you stop him. That is being edge intelligence. Okay, trying to analyze with a set of other data that is being added to it in order to make it secure. Now, what is the biggest problem that we normally face in this case? Okay, the biggest problem is security, which is the weakest link. You know, uh, they normally say in security, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. See, all this are very strong. Okay, so the hacker will not look at all this. He will only look at the small, uh, weaker link. Find out where exactly there is a small hole where I can easily cut and enter into it. So he will not uh, give his strength on what is uh, stronger. Okay, I'll give you one more example. What is this? You all know it is KPN Kadalamitai packet. And uh, have you seen uh, a Kadalamitai packet out on the floor uh, for a night? When you wake up in the morning, what do you see on it? Ants. Ants on it, yes. You see a lot of ants coming into it. And how do these ants enter into the Kadalamitai packet? Can one of you explain? Have you seen these ants entering inside the packet?
How do these ants come in? Yes, yes, please. They find the tiniest hole somewhere in the packet. Yes, there is one tiny hole somewhere in the packet. But how many ants do you see inside the packet? Five. So many of them. Many, many of them. Okay. So many of the ants go inside, but it is only through a tiny hole, which is the weakest, uh, you know, location. They just spend their amount of energy to poke the small hole and then enter inside it. This is the biggest problem with security. You know, with all the devices that we have, with all the tech technology that we have, maybe you can also think about the COVID situation that we are in. You know, we are using sanitizers, we are using masks to protect us, and we are taking all types of precautions. But still, you know, the weakest link, the virus tries to affect us, and uh, we go down. Right? That is because there. can be exploited anywhere so it is very important that we protect ourselves in all aspects okay so here you call it a network connecting billions of info, uh, devices together and these devices connect with all the other devices so it is a big pyramid that you look at okay so when you look at it you keep your cloud very secure no problem you keep your fog or your edge intelligent devices very secure your gateway is secured you have a firewall you have a, a threat monitoring system you have an ids you have an ips okay you have everything in setup and you have a lo lower uh, packet that i called as the edge devices okay or the uh, things that are being connected together if your thing is insecure through this they can access the server okay that is where a big problem lies in that is why uh, people are very worried about security when it comes to connecting online you know a network is only as secure as its weakest node and the vulnerable network entry points open for the attackers so what happens in this case is that when your uh, network is being um, breached you can uh, have a breach either in your uh, device or on your gateway or on your cloud or on the analysis servers the web applications that you use in order to process the information that is present in the cloud and the breach can be through any point okay of course you have your uh, application to be properly defined good you have your cloud to be properly secure good but if your one of your edge device is open through that it can access all the other information this is imagine the ants entering into your uh, packet of sweet okay they just need one small hole and through that hole they will be able to take control over the entire network that is available within them and the small hole is not normally on a gateway or on a cloud because any person who tries to uh, gain control over a network does not look at the network alone he looks at which is easy and vulnerable for me to understand okay so some of the problems that normally happen if you uh, browse the internet some of the problems that normally happen on edge security is damaging the device by overclocking or overheating giving the device a lot of uh, data to work with your device gets heated and as it gets heated the uh, uh, efficiency of your device comes down and it gets damaged the battery gets damaged then the device goes off so once a device is off you will not be able to use the application okay so it uh, um, stops the availability of information okay so this will be a security problem for a big organization when the device is not available and this availability is because someone has misused the device and the device is not working at a particular time okay and some of the other breaches performing battery draining operations to kill the battery especially in medical implants you know you have a pacemaker or you have uh, some implant inside your body and uh, you know they try to drain the battery operations in order to kill it then it becomes a uh, uh, threatening in stuff and uh, people may lose uh, life because of it okay using the edge node to retrieve sensitive information from the server a uh, recent 2 uh, years back we had a problem with the, all the um, 
in uh, UK, we had a problem with the ransomware that tried to bring down all the hospital data. Okay. And uh, people were trying to scrambling to find out where, how exactly this hospital data uh, network was breached. Rama Lakshmi, yes. Uh, how the exactly the hospital data was breached, and they found that it was, uh, you know, at the entry point in a hospital, you will have a, a nurse sitting or a person who is a, um, is a receptionist sitting, and they will just take the username and try to give you a card and uh, give you an entry inside the system. Okay, so this computer that was present for the novice user at the entry of a hospital system was. Please keep yourself muted. Yes, uh, so this computer that was connected to the uh, entry of a uh, inside the entry place of a computer of a hospital was connected with the whole uh, MIS of the hospital. Okay, so the ICU was connected, the um, uh, small devices in the ICU, you know, you have the heart monitor connected to the ICU patient on the bed, everything was connected to the same system. Now, what happened was the hacker was able to breach into this uh, receptionist computer system because she had not taken time to upgrade the software. Okay, the operating system was outdated. So the hacker was able to uh, exploit one uh, hole that was present in the uh, operating system or what we call as uh, some exploit, some um, vulnerability that was present in the system and he was able to gain into the network. So through this small employee's uh, system, the hacker, because this is also connected to the internet, so the hacker enters through this and he is able to gain the whole database of the hospital. And what happened was he uh, locked everything so that all the patient information was not available for them and they wanted the people to pay money to them in order to open up the system. Since it's very sensitive, medical records, so people had to pay amount in order to retrieve the information from the server. So when you look at it, it may not be the uh, biggest gateways or the cloud servers that need uh, uh, a lot of security, but each and every. Okay, so uh, another thing is analysis of communication ports in order to emulate fake devices. Uh, we have email spoofing. Similarly, we can also spoof a small uh, sensor so that as, as if it is an original sensor, I am adding a new sensor that is fake. And that sensor will help me in accessing the information. So what happens? The sensor connects, sends data to the server. If the sensor takes back information from the sensor, the server, then automatically this sensor can be exploited in order to gain control over the entire network. I hope you will be able to understand the magnificence of the problem. It is not in how secure you have inside the network, but one system that you are connecting to it. It's very important. That is why people say don't connect on to any insecure network platform because all the data that you have on your computer system would be vulnerable to it. Okay, So you have firmware readout, binary modification, patching the downloader if write protection is not enabled. Uh, sorry, patching the bootloader if the write protection is not enabled. Trying to add their own scripts into our systems or uh, uh, giving us an email attachment so that when the email opens, then my system is compromised and the hacker takes control over my system. And as if he is me, he tries to take over the entire network. Okay, Trying to uh, exploit the administrative privileges that I have. Crashing the device by sending random data through ports. This happens very rarely unless it is a high critical system. OK, that is why, you know, recently we have been hearing about security breaches on the Kudan Kulam uh, power plant. We have been hearing about security breaches in the power grids uh, that were present in Mumbai. So it, it may be not in Tamil Nadu because that was a mechanical uh, error that was happening. It was not uh, the problem with the database. But there are a lot of devices that 
crash which are not available for a particular time because of the security breaches that happen in them okay you have timing attacks on access patterns for computation of encrypted payloads at a particular time the attack starts glitching the hardware by disrupting the power or uh, uh, making it uh, making it a denial of service where the user will not be able to access a service analysis of the power uh, chips power consumption during encryption analysis of electromagnetic radiation and creating a clone device which uses the data extracted from the vulnerable end nodes to bring down entire networks so all it takes is that is a dedicated hacker who will understand these unfortified devices millions and billions of devices are there so you will not know which ant will be able to poke into the uh, network but once that happens you will be able to gain control over the entire network has it happened recently yes uh, you know uh, people say that after the pandemic we have a lot of uh, breaches that have been happening like this um you know in 2019 we had a siemens uh, institute study that founded uh, found that 56% of gas wind water and solar utilities across the world had experienced at least one cyber attack that caused a shutdown or a loss of operation you know a shutdown or a loss of operation is not like india In india we have a power cut then we immediately go to the next house and say uh, do you also have a power cut and then we keep a fan and we try to wait for the power to come back okay but uh, in other countries each minute that they lose in a power cut they lose millions of dollars of transaction so they look at it as uh, something that has to be kept up in order to uh, increase the productivity in the country so in such cases if your gas wind or water or solar utility stuff come down then it becomes a big problem okay and uh, checkpoint research saw 50% increase in daily average of ransomware attacks compared to the first half of the year and this ransomware has become a really big problem malware that attack uh, systems recently the government of india has uh, created a honey pot node in various locations across india to collect these malware ransomware that attack in order to identify how exactly they work in order to provide with a, a proactive system that can protect them okay and uh, malware has infected roughly 13500 internet of thing devices like android tvs in 84 countries especially in asia if you have a smart tv at home be very careful if your tv automatically connects to the internet and you have a wifi connectivity on uh, on all the time at home you will have to be very careful because your uh, tv can be attacked okay so it's very important that we look at all these safety features before we start working on them an example would be your uh, smart tv that you have at home okay when we wanted to get a device for my children's uh, um, online classes we were looking at what are the security features and uh, what will be less uh, affecting the children and we found that an ordinary desktop monitor big screen is the best thing where you can uh, control what they view and see that it doesn't affect radiations in them and also it is not very smart so uh, uh, those led tvs that come that say that you can directly connect to netflix and work they are gathering a lot of your tv viewing capabilities and also some information about your house okay so it's very important one other breach was this uh, uh, we had this robot cleaning robot no um self cleaning robot that work whether it's just 30 or 35000 it's available in india also too okay and uh, you know as soon as i saw that i said okay we'll just go for it because we have a dishwasher we have a washing machine then we have this uh, robotic device at home then we will be happy because we will not be dependent on a maid to come and uh, uh, help us right and then we went into the uh, specifics of the robot we found that this robot can work only from a mobile phone okay this robot is actually an edge intelligence edge intelligent device 
okay a device that can think of its own and uh, you know when you take uh, get the mobile uh, robot you have a mobile app to which it is connected from the mobile app you will be able to access it your mobile should be connected to the company so server okay what happens is that this uh, um, device will uh, map your entire house okay it will remember your entire house it will make things very easy for you so it will uh, uh, identify how many rooms you have what is the size of your room how many obstacles you have how many bed how many chair you have and how many uh, people are there inside your house it will be able to remember all this by trying to map the entire space that it goes through inside the house listen my house the data of the inside of my house is being stored in a third party's computer do you call it safe and uh, you know as soon as we saw that we were, uh, looked at some options saying is there any way in which we can work with this robo without the application without the uh, software it says no the robo cannot be manually operated only through the software which is connected to the company server you will be able to access the robo you know this is something that uh, uh, people are trying to infuse you look at amazon uh, siri alexa they are all good with their own advantages edge intelligent devices that can think of its own but that is also connected to the server in a few um, you know uh, i don't know if they will be able to create an edge device on that but it needs connection to the uh, google cloud in order to do it but why do they push all those devices inside a uh, house because what is happening inside a house google has to know in order to get more information from uh, people so they try to push all these devices inside so that they will be able to collect a lot of information identify who you exactly are in order to uh, work accordingly and try to do targeted marketing accordingly uh, this was uh, um, two days back we had it on hindu it was all international also um it is a, a massive uh, kasaya ransomware attack wherein uh, in sweden and uh, new zealand you know these small uh, uh, stores and all they have their own connections and uh, these uh, will um, take their services from a bigger company that will provide them with business data intelligence or uh, inventory service so they have their computers connected and uh, uh, these all these small uh, kirana shops have small small computers in them that will take the software from the bigger companies in order to use this was what reliance was start trying i don't know how much they have progressed on it where uh, reliance wanted to provide with a market which will connect all the kirana shops together okay but what happened was uh, this was actually a russian uh, according to the claim it was a russian hacker group that uh, is called evil something i, I think i'm not uh, cut that part here so what happens is that they uh, broke into the network they sold a malware that crippled the network on activation by scrambling all their data so only when you pay up you will be able to get the decoder key in order to unscramble your data so more than 800 stores were closed uh, for more than 2 days because their cash register software supplier was crippled pharmacy chain gas station chain railways public broadcasters were also hit the reason behind this was one of their uh, systems somewhere had been exposed and through that the hacker was able to access the information and he crippled the entire network so that people were not able to work okay and recently when biden went to uh, talk with the russian uh, president he took up this matter of this hacker group which had uh, a lot of patronage in russia and uh, people keep working it is all most of it are state state, state sponsored and they try to um, gain uh, information which is present uh, inside okay one thing i want you to remember is that with these kinds of edge information devices available all over it's very important that we protect our own privacy and our own data by trying to do various things 
okay simple mechanisms that you can follow in order to uh, protect yourself so what we normally do is that we have various security mechanisms which have been working on for a long time which we can use it now also okay application of security practices at the network nodes that are outside the network core say all the systems inside nit trichy will have an ip and they will be inside the local network and we assume because there is enough security and uh, you know physical security a uh, wall around we assume that people from outside will not be able to access these network nodes so basic network security practice will be to log in using a username and a password to have an otp to check whether you are a bot you will have a captcha available in it this is what we normally use even if you look at your uh, sbi website now they have introduced a otp a captcha a virtual keyboard and uh, other uh, security measures in order to protect the online uh, content that is present in it okay so these are said to be security practices at the network nodes and uh, these network nodes have to be protected with their own uh, um, algorithms which have been developed already okay then we complete uh, the entire complete network must be visible to the administrators like i told you normally administrators would only be focusing on those servers have a sanitized environment around it in order to protect it but what the administrator is not able to understand is a end user trying to access the system as if he is someone else okay say someone access my account a hacker accesses my account and he logs into the system as me then what will the administrator think it is only me working but actually it's not me but the hacker who has taken control over my network this is where the problem occurs because administrators normally um, assume that legitimate users are okay right and they do not assume whether someone else will take access over my system so only when the entire network is visible to the administrator will they be able to identify if there is an anomaly in the way in which the data is changed or the data is being processed okay and then you have automated monitoring tools that must be used by these administrators now we have the cyber threat intelligence generation tools that are available you do monitoring you do uh, prediction you try to prevent future attacks from happening i have one student who is working on um, analyzing flow data you know as the network data flows how can you find out anomaly in them in order to prevent denial of service it's very difficult in order to find it out because your data is huge your information is huge but with these uh, machine learning deep learning algorithms to some extent we will be able to monitor and try to find out patterns in them okay and the data needs to be encrypted both at rest and in transit you know normally we were worried only about data in transit but now even your data that you store inside your databases you encrypt even the data that you have inside your uh, uh, you know computers you have the option from uh, microsoft in order to encrypt your data so when you are encrypting then someone will not be able to take over your data and even if they are able to take it over they will not be able to understand the information that we have okay then there must be restrictions on access to multi manipulate data and network resources so this restrictions depends on the type of user the type of access privilege that the user has and it has to be constantly monitored that is where the problem happens okay as a human being we will not be able to monitor these problems so uh, we are trying to slowly incorporate machines that can help us with these uh, monitoring this uh, uh, flagging when some problem happens even an example was given in the visual sensor network i think you would have heard about it visual sensor network connects a set of uh, uh, cameras together you know over a big highway uh, you know long highway you have a set of cameras at different intervals of time so when a car moves from camera 1 to camera 2 it should automatically be tracked 
a human being cannot keep moving from one camera to the other normally in your police stations you will have a big uh, screen with all the camera information coming and lots of people sitting before it trying to monitor it but in visual sensor network we are trying to monitoring monitor it using object deductions okay so as the car moves then immediately the next camera would be alerted saying this number car is coming here and then that camera goes and the camera will have its own uh, edge device that can do some processing and send the data back to the main server in order to process the given data okay so uh, this is something that is working with many types of devices now and the covid has pushed us into a situation wherein uh, we are uh, put to we are trying to use these edge devices a lot okay the next is the most important uh, thing that uh, most of us forget, forget to do of course now windows has an automatic update that it does and uh, recently windows has been disabling uh, older versions of their operating systems not providing it any support in order to prevent these problems from occurring okay periodic firmware updates software updates uh, patches that come in so that has to be updated if you are a computer professional you will have it updated but if you are not a computer professional how do you do it that is where the problem comes in hackers try to exploit these uh, unpatched firmware in order to gain access into a network so periodic firmware update is something which is very very important for all the softwares that we try to use uh, next is an example of changing your default passwords um, there was a problem with this default password uh, in uh, most of the iot devices that came in you know uh, you have a username and a password username will be root and password will be a default given by the iot uh, manufacturer okay when we get a device maybe a talking doll or a baby monitoring system or a, a you know a robot that goes inside your house uh, you know we don't uh, for, uh, think about changing the default passwords inside because already we have a lot of passwords so we cannot uh, uh, you know keep adding more passwords to what set we have so what happens is that when you use the default password on your mobile system through that the hacker will be able to access on to your uh, mobile phone and through your because that device that cleans your house is connected to your mobile phone and your mobile phone is connected to the system's uh, software so through this device it gets connected and the hacker communicates with your mobile phone takes control of your mobile phone as if you are the user he will access the server and do all havoc inside it okay and uh, this default passwords were a problem with many baby monitoring systems and uh, old age home monitoring systems people uh, you know elderly people management systems and also in uh, uh, systems that were developed for uh, disabled people okay wherein if a hacker gains control over it then he will be able to manipulate it and create a lot of problems in the network or even if he doesn't create any problem which is lethal just the uh, reputation of a person goes down okay and as the reputation goes down then it becomes a problem right uh, um, people will not uh, be able to trust whatever we tell them and then it becomes a problem so this trust factor is very very important and uh, security breaches on the edge devices have been a very big problem for maintaining this trust factor okay some of the other security mechanisms which we normally uh, do i will just go through uh, very briefly on this and then we will stop so you have uh, encryption which has been used for a long time now what people are trying to do is trying to encrypt the information that your edge device uh, sends to the um, server that is close to it okay even if it is on wifi we have this uh, um, less weight low weight uh, security protocols that are available which can make the transition transmission possible bluetooth 5.0 is one such example that people uh, have developed in order to create a lightweight mechanism to just transfer one bit of information or one integer value from the edge device to the other 
which will use encryption in order to make this possible. Uh, so encrypting, decrypting, that we call it as cryptography in general. And uh, cryptography has played a lot of roles. And uh, the security keys, signatures, all those gain uh, advantage now. Okay. What is the uh, problem with your cryptography when you are trying to use it on a edge device? Can you give me a uh, problem that you normally face when you use a cryptographic algorithm on an IoT device? Any problems that you can envision when you use your cryptographic algorithms on IoT devices? We have this RSA. We have this uh, DES, right? Any answers that I can see on the chat? Or maybe you can unmute and tell, or else I would assume that all of you have gone to sleep. I've been talking for an hour. Yes, delay in the process. Okay, delay in the process. The uh, size of your device, you know, it's very small. You will not be able to use the device in order to do the encryption and the decryption because the capacity for uh, processing is very less. Okay, of course, our cell phones now have dual processors in it and it is able to do the various processing. But think of a, a soil monitoring system or a, a other a sensor that you attach to it. It takes a lot of uh, uh, time and effort in order to energy in order to do the processing available in it. Okay, so people are trying to work with lightweight cryptography. Okay. On the other hand, the technology has been improving. We have uh, Internet 5.0 on the Anvil. We have uh, quantum uh, uh, computing coming into picture. So with them, the size of your device keeps reducing. You know, the size of your cell phones keep reducing. The amount of processing that you normally do keeps reducing. So one side, the technology is improving. And uh, uh, the uh, improved technology can be harnessed in order to uh, create an effective edge secure device for assets. Okay, but it will take some more time for us to uh, envision a device on the quantum uh, spectrum, but people are still working on it. Okay, another thing is about visibility and monitoring. Okay, if your uh, network is visible and it is constantly monitored, as soon as a breach occurs, you will be able to immediately stop the network. Okay, and then you will be able to protect them. So this is about after the breach has happened. Okay, now with the intelligence available, we are trying to protect it and uh, predict when a breach will occur. Okay, it is like trying to uh, find out if a uh, thief will come and attack your house and trying to um, reinforce your house before the attack happens. Okay, so if you can have the information only about your house, it is not possible to find out if a thief will come and attack. But if you have an information about the whole of your city, okay, and uh, where all uh, breaches have occurred, then you will find a pattern of how the thief moves in. So you will know that tonight he may come this side, okay, and this is where your analytics comes into picture, okay. With analytics, we will be able to find out. If something can happen, we will be able to monitor and we will be able to protect them. Okay, IDS and IPS, uh, they have been integrated into the cyber threat intelligent devices now. The intrusion detection system, intrusion prevention system, firewalls, all these are being integrated together as threat monitoring and threat intelligence devices. And uh, these devices uh, provide us with enough uh, um, algorithms and uh, methodologies that are being used in order to protect. Okay, so there are different types of IDS IPS available. Access control is the uh, oldest methodology. I just added it so that uh, you still uh, understand how it works. You know, the principle of least privilege. We as human users normally tell others 
that uh, uh, only the information that we want them to know. Our family members know all the information, whereas the neighbors know little information. Your uh, colleagues know a little different information than what your neighbors know. Okay, you don't give out all the information that your family members know with your colleagues outside. This is access control. Each person is given a particular amount of privilege only. Remember, on your mobile phone also this has to happen. On your edge device also this has to happen. Wherein you take your device and you give access to those apps for only those uh, um, privileges that they are asking. You know, you have a permission section in your app. Please go through that and remove the permissions for all the apps which are not needed. Remove the contacts even. Because if you have a WhatsApp, on your WhatsApp, all your contacts are there and those contacts will be accessible to WhatsApp. Okay, And someone infringes WhatsApp, they will be able to access all your contract details on Gmail. Leaving your Gmail account on on your system is making yourself vulnerable to a security attack. Okay, so this access control, what will the uh, um, attacker do? He will go log into your system and then try to gain control over your system. And then he will change his privileges so that he will be able to log into your system anytime it is powered on and connected to the internet. That is why it's very important that you disconnect your system from the internet, shut it down when you have stopped move, uh, using it. Okay, because we are uh, so uh, happy with the using systems, with the convenience that it provides, that we take it for granted and we become vulnerable for exploitation. Cyber threat intelligent devices are being developed now. Cisco is working on them, all uh, Symantec and all. Uh, so there are software uh, threat monitoring systems, hardware threat monitoring systems also available that are being developed in order to monitor the system automatically in the packet level, in the algorithmic level, in the uh, usage level also. And based on analytics, trying to prevent them. Okay? And proactive threat monitoring is what has not happened so far. But uh, uh, you know, uh, certain uh, cases uh, like YouTube, Facebook, they have used crowdsourcing in order to do it. And they are also using this uh, algorithms in order to make this happen. Algorithms like your recommender systems, which you use in order to uh, tell something which is important. Okay, So this proactive threat monitoring is trying to prevent a threat from happening. It's like our intelligence bureau giving information to our uh, police department saying that this may happen. It may happen or may not happen. There may be false positives and negatives. But still, this helps in making ourselves more secure. Surveillance, which we have added everywhere. All our schools have a camera now. And uh, we have uh, uh, drones used across India, both used and misused now. Then uh, uh, for main, many operations, people have been using surveillance. Even apps have been used for surveillance, right? trying to gather information about us. Then multi-factor authentication, trying to um, I find out the identity of a user in order to protect the integrity of the data and the information about the user. And there are many more security mechanisms in place in order to protect the edge devices. And uh, uh, but they are all in uh, experimental stages only. OK, so if you are using any device that is connected to a network, be careful about how you are using it because the data behind it is being vulnerable. And through your device, you would also expose the network that you are connected into. Okay, And if your children are connected to the same laptop, you have to be very careful. Okay, If your uh, uh, um, office uh, network is separate on your VPN, be careful about the way in which we work on them. Because through a simple small hole, the hacker will be able to access the entire network. And this is the biggest problem that all governments and all the MNCs face. And uh, they are very silent about it because uh, they think that we, they can push in these uh, uh, systems now during the pandemic so that we will get addicted to it and we will not worry about the security implications. But it's very 
uh, important that we think about it and be aware of how much of my own personal information I'm giving outside for people to understand. I will stop with this. If there are any questions, I can take a few questions. You can either chat or type in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and ask. Participants, yes, yes, sir, yes, sir, proceed. Uh, this uh, edge technology is locally placed or it is somewhere nearby? It can be on the um, device which you are using, okay, it can be local or it can be within a particular, uh, you know, uh, not outside the area which you are working in. Actually, the uh, geography of it is not defined. It should be within the uh, close to the device in which the sensor is being attached in. So um, what people normally do now is try to take a device and uh, you know a sensor, maybe a biometric sensor which is fitted on a, a door and on the biometric sensor itself they have a small memory attached with it. Okay, a small uh, uh, hard disk that will store all the biometric of the people who will enter inside that boardroom so that it will check only with that information and it will give you the answer. This is on the device itself. Okay. And if it is within an area, within an organization, then that device can connect with the server, local server, not with the uh, communication cloud server and it will uh, give an information. So that we called it as fog. On the device itself, we call it as the edge. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, which certification would you suggest? For what? For uh, security? Microsoft certification is there. There are a lot of certifications. Depending on where you want to work, you can take the certification accordingly. If that is the certification you talk about. Can blockchain technology be used along with edge computing? Yes, blockchain will be a game, game changer. And uh, blockchain uh, also increases transparency. So blockchain is being used for uh, this uh, edge computing where on your edge devices, you can, uh, from your edge device, in order to connect to the cloud, you add it as a blockchain so that your uh, <coughs> security increases. Recently, we had a um, workshop on blockchain in NIT Trichy, and uh, they were talking about hyperledgers, near blockchain, Ethereum, oh, okay. and all of them are being used on uh, uh, edge uh, IoT devices also. It is very nascent now. They have not uh, fully expanded it, but it is possible. Right? So far, IoT people were talking only about connections and how it worked. But now they are concerned about the security also. So when security becomes a problem, blockchain is the answer to it. How security helps to improve the efficiency of load balancing? Do you mean in power systems? Load balancing? Because I'm not uh, uh, very familiar with the power systems. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Load balancing, people are using softwares in order to do it. On your, if you, if I am right on the power systems, because Mumbai, we had this problem of the uh, power system coming down. 
and uh, that is an example of your iot devices being compromised so uh, all these devices even in your banks you have a lot of problems coming in now that is because these bank softwares were written a long time ago and the people don't update their uh, systems also so the hacker keeps uh, uh, bombing and he tries to get into any one of the system then he will be able to wipe out the entire amount of money that he can lay hold on and we have lost crores of rupees accordingly okay and we have we are actually working with idrbt and uh, they are trying to find out a framework for the mobile applications we have a lot of banking applications of course sbi has its own apps then uh, uh, idbi every bank has its own app but uh, they lack security a lot and it's very important that you uh, Uh, be careful when you do your transactions on a mobile app do it from an account that is very has very less ma money in it because uh, people can easily wipe out i don't have any any of those banking accounts on my mobile phone even on my uh, laptop laptop we have a separate uh, account which has less amount on which we do all the online processing okay unless we are very careful about it uh we can easily be exploited and uh, money can be taken out of it any other questions oh no, ma'am edge uh, security is what we will be working with in future okay no um, you want it or not whether it is secure or not we will be interacting with devices that can either communicate with a nearby server or with a cloud server or within itself okay but it is left up to the user in order to identify how much information you can give to it remember it is like your jewels whatever information you have about yourself you can uh, just throw it out to others but what will happen is if it falls on the wrong hands they will try to exploit it i'll give you one more example of it on facebook on uh, instagram we are doing a lot of liking we are doing a lot of clicking we are spending time looking at a video you know these companies uh, analyze all this information if i you take it as janet they will try to find out how many information i have gone through what are the um, you know pictures i have gone through what are the videos that i have spent time looking at and they identify my preferences so what they will do is from the data that they have taken they will try to profile me which only a psychologist or doctor whom you have met for 100 year you know 5 uh, years or 10 years together will be able to do now this company will be able to do this is where the problem occurs then they will try to change your behavioral pattern you know manipulate you using media using advertisement so that they force you into buying something right so this is where your data can be misused where people can get hold of your data that you give and they can try to exploit it in order to uh, use it okay edge computing is different from mobile compute edge computing mobile edge is the uh, you know uh, end device mobile has a lot of sensors in it that can also be an edge device there are different names that people give fancy names that people give to internet of everything ambiguous computing pervasive computing so distributed computing grid computing everything merges together on your uh, and uh, edge is one such name that people give to it you cannot identify ransomware in iot devices unless the ransomware encrypts your entire device okay so what we normally uh, can do is a uh, check your device to see if there is any uh, malware any anything that it does by itself okay so uh, that is what we normally do or install some uh, software which is reliable that can detect a malware in it 
okay if you are not opening your if you are careful and sanitized in the way in which you deal digitally then you need not worry about uh, these uh, malwares if you keep opening all the videos that you have all the attachments in a file only then you will be exposed to a ransomware uh, recently i was reading about that uh, stan swami you know uh, he was on the news because uh, he had been wrongly uh, people told that he had been wrongly put in jail and uh, uh, when it was talked about the uh, document that was planted on his computer uh, what was written on the paper i am just quoting okay it says that uh, the uh, hacker had been trying all through february you know one full month in order to install a ransomware inside his computer but all these activists had been already uh, warned to be very careful but finally it looked very authentic that he was able to uh, he had uh, downloaded one of the uh, files that was attached as a minutes of a meeting which all these uh, activists attend together and through that one click he was able to infect the file and he was able to plant all the documents inside and that resulted in the arrest is what the uh, news article claimed it to be this is where the problem starts okay when your information is misused or without your knowledge something happens into it then uh, you can be uh, you you can be uh, you will have to face some consequences because of it so it's very important that we keep ourselves safe and very knowledgeable about the security problems that happen when we look at all these types of uh, security measures because everywhere security is a problem and the manufacturers are not worried about it because they are only worried about marketing so it is the end user as a user of a device i should be worried about how am i using it and i should always be willing to give up some of the comforts in order to use them there's nothing else then i i would like to wind up any other questions participants if you have any questions you can post you have any questions okay okay ma'am thank you ma'am it's really an informative and interesting session ma'am so the highlight of your session is the real time examples like kpn kadalamuttai and the jewelry which which made us to understand the concepts very easily and we won't forget the concepts forever thank you ma'am thank you so much thank you very much so professor uh, it was very much informative and uh, for the participants uh, you can always uh, revisit the lecture which is available in the youtube as well as uh, your google classroom whenever you would like to revisit that you can come you, you can uh, suggest that to all your colleagues uh, they can visit the youtube channel and uh, find out and thank you sir thank you thank you ma'am yes. so let's all meet back after a small break at 12 noon thank you all Thank you ma'am thank you sir